Hi, Mel. How are you doing today? Great. How are you today? I'm doing really well. It feels good to be doing really well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's a great start. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you and whatever day this is airing. Happy that day too. <laughs> good. Um, so tell me where you are and tell me how you've been coping and, and yeah, how are you coping? What does it look like where you are? I'm in San Jose, California. Um, I think it, countrywide, I think San Jose and the Bay Area in general was kind of ahead of things. Um, I still remember watching the news in shock when they were limiting groups over, I think, 5,000. It was like, oh my gosh, this is such a big change and just shocked. And then within days, it was okay, limiting groups even smaller and smaller. And so um, I did one teaching event in early March, came back and pretty much self-quarantined myself since I was flying and everything else. And so I've been um, sheltering in place, staying at home um, for gosh, over two months now. Um, but you know, getting out to exercise, to walk, um, trying to stay you know, busy and productive as best as I can. Some days it's easier, some days it's harder. Um, I think maybe three weeks ago, I kind of hit a bit of a slump, um, just sort of everything catching up with me. And, but now I seem to be embracing and seeing a lot more silver linings to everything that's going on in the world around me, so yeah. Yeah, you coping okay now? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of new opportunities, and yes, it was a big change and big shift. And it's like, what now? I mean, I had lined up all these teaching engagements. I was super excited, and everything just kind of just my calendar went blank. And so it was like, okay, scramble, repivot. What can I do now? And I'm seeing new opportunities. I feel like my schedule is busier than ever. I'm getting more studio time, but I'm also connecting with people that I haven't connected in a wide, you know, wide time in terms of like colleagues that were all like scrambling to how can we support one of each other, which is wonderful. Um, I'm connecting with um, old camp staff that I worked with. We're planning a reunion coming up. And so technology has really helped us stay connected and it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I always thought I was an introvert. And so I will be honest, the first week or two when we were sheltering in place, I was secretly giddy. I'm like, this is awesome. I can be whole. <laughs> <laughs> so I had somehow planned back in like January, February, I'd gotten into some painting. And so I ordered all these supplies and I'm like, I get time to play. I don't have to teach. I don't have to leave. And within about 10 days, I started getting antsy. I'm like, I need people. I'm missing people. And so I started reaching out to my small cool group saying, hey, you want to do Zoom lunches and reaching out to other people, trying to create some kind of social interaction and face to face. And it's really been a saving grace. Those few that probably that one week that was really low energy, um, connecting with my small cool group and seeing that we were all experiencing the same challenges, same um, distress in daily life, just trying to cope. It made me feel not, not alone anymore. I was like, wow, you know, I'm part of something bigger and, and really helped me snap out of that particular funk. And so that's been a huge part of, I guess, my coping strategy for these past you know, two months. So it's just staying connected. Yeah. You and me both. Um, I find that this connection, this daily connection is, is the best part of my day and, and really keeps me going. And I think I was skeptical about how you can stay connected virtually. I, I think I was just like, okay, it's not gonna feel the same as being in person. And I'm amazed. I attended the Sakwa virtual retreat back in March and it was amazing how intimate it felt and, and how I was able to connect with quilters all over the world. We had members from Australia, we had members from Europe, you know, in uh, throughout. And it was just so strangely intimate and we were all united all together in this space. It's really amazing what, what um, technologies can do for us. And I keep thinking, you know, if this happened when I was younger in school, how would we be coping with all of this without Zoom and everything else that we have at our fingertips? And so it's, I'm thankful that it's happening now and not back when we would have been much more uh, isolated. Yeah, and, and I agree as well. It would be so hard. I, I still have two kids at home in school, so it would be really hard to figure all that. I think it would be just a loss for the rest of the year. Um, so at least they have something going. And I find it interesting, you sound similar to the way I operate. Um, I really like having a week or two on my own, but by the end of the week, if I've, and I'm, I can be so productive. Oh, yeah. you know, I started quilting after I had my first baby. So I think it was last year, the first time ever that I had like three weeks clear 
of a schedule. First time ever. Mm. And I made like eight quilts because I also had a deadline. <laughs> I was like, I had no idea I could do this. But at the end of the week, I thought I was going to go crazy. I needed to talk to people so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just that connection and hearing what are they doing and just kind of getting outside of yourself because it's I don't know when I'm quilting, it's very meditative. I really do a lot of thinking, a lot of soul searching. Mm -hmm. And, but I need somebody else to kind of share that with and bounce off ideas at some point. Right. So yeah, definitely. Right. So what have you been working on during the downtime, which is no longer downtime? It's just getting busy again, isn't it? Yeah. I, I would say the first week or two when I was giddy, I was wrapping up a lot of UFOs, a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. I had looming deadlines. Those deadlines are disappeared, but I thought they were more urgent. And so I wrapped, I was super productive that week or two. And then I kind of, okay, now what? Everything's kind of disappeared off my, my calendar. And so um, in early April, uh, it started a hundred day project. And I've always wanted to do one of these. And I always thought, okay, my travel schedule, I can't be schlepping machines. I can't bring all these supplies if I'm traveling. And I always kind of thought, why start? Cause I'm gonna fail at some point. And so seeing my calendar wide open, I'm like, well, this is the perfect opportunity to do a hundred day project. And so a friend kind of nudged me to try it. I was like, okay. So I kind of thought about the first day, what are some rules? I, I find having a few rules will set me up for success if I have structure, a little bit of structure. And so I kind of came up with, I, I really want to be more intentional with um, using, be more intentional with using different color schemes, uh, elements of art, design principles, because I find there's certain ones I gravitate over and over. Yeah, and so I want to be more intentional in, in pushing the boundaries. And so what I did is I kind of um, assigned, uh, I, I like playing games, and so I grabbed some dice. And so my white die relates to color schemes. So if I roll like a one, it means I do a monochromatic color scheme. If I do a two, complementary, triadic, things like that. So I've given myself three color schemes. My red one goes to the elements of art. So maybe I want to play with line or shape or value. And then the green one, when I roll that, that's a design principle that I'm going to incorporate. And so I kind of, hopefully you can see that. I can send this to you as well. Yeah, just leave it right there for a second. So color scheme, monochromatic, emphasis, movement. Excellent, nice. I changed a few things midway through. And so what I do is most of the time, this is how I end my day. It's something I really look forward to. I don't plan. I don't think of anything because it's totally improvisational. Until I roll the dice, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I roll all three dice. I circle it. Um, I put this in a set of sheet protector so I can circle it. And then I pull out my scraps. I have a whole tub of fused uh, scraps left over from <laughs> workshops and previous projects. And so I sorted them by color. And so once I know, okay, I'm going to do monochromatic, maybe I want to play with purple today. I haven't played with purple monochromatic yet. I pull out the scraps and I look at what are the fabrics telling me to do, you know, in terms of playing with line or pattern or whatever. And all I'm doing is a seven inch by seven inch block. So super doable. It takes me maybe 45 minutes to an hour start mm -hmm. to finish. And I'm on day 35 today. So I'm more than a third. Look of at all those behind you. Yeah. So. You've been posting them on social media too, and they're fabulous. I've enjoyed watching them so much. Thank you. Yeah. Every day I post them to Instagram and then every week I batch them up and kind of do a personal critique. You know, was I successful? What might I do differently? Um, and really kind of do a, a weekly review. And it's really, I mean, it's so liberating. It's really pushing me to play with new things I never would have done before, having just a few rules. And I'm just, it, it's an enjoyable way of ending my day each day. I have to get myself in the studio. Some days it's 10 p.m., but it's like, nope, I've got to stay on track, keep getting my little check marks. Um, my goal is to turn my blocks into a finished or multiple finished quilt. So I just finished my first batch of 25. I'm hoping to turn those into a smaller quilt and then I picked some gray backgrounds will be my next kind of grouping of backgrounds. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I do find, um, and you did say you were using my book a little oh, bit. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Uh, That's exciting. You know, because some of these, you know, I mentioned there's certain ones I gravitate over and over, but, you know, there's like, well, what else do I, what does emphasis really mean? And how can I really push the boundaries with balance? And so, yes, yours is one of the three books that I kind of refer to as kind of my text, if you will. So if I get stumped or I'm kind of feeling in a rut, I can pull out these books and say, okay, what else can I do? What haven't I done already? or give me more definition. And so that's been a valuable resource. So thanks, Lyric. <laughs> well, you're welcome. And thank you for thank you for doing it. It's such, I'm such a fan of giving yourself a little box 
with you know a few boundaries and taking a set amount of time with no expectations of this has to be good, this has to be pretty, it has to be right, just completely freely play. And sometimes it's great and sometimes it doesn't work. And either way, what you're doing going back at the end of the week and evaluating it is the best outcome. It's the evaluation and the learning process because then even if it did turn out terrible, instead of just looking on it, you say, why? What could I do different? What is it that I don't like about it? And answer all those questions. And then you've learned something really, really valuable from that thing, even though the end product wasn't 100% perfect like you wanted it to be, right? Yep. And it's interesting, like blocks that I think maybe weren't so successful. I post them on Instagram. I'm getting so much engagement. People are like, this is my favorite one ever. And so it's really been fun being part of a community because other folks are seeing it. They're looking forward to my daily posts. And I'd say the ones that I love, people are like, eh, it's okay, you know, and so, which is totally fine. But I do see several of my blocks, I can imagine blowing them up into a larger piece at some point. And so it's really a chance to play, like you said, every day and see what might happen and being right. open to those possibilities. Right. You know? And you never know, you never know what's going to happen. And that's another one of my soapbox wonderful things is that no matter what's in your head when you create something, other people are going to look at it through their own lenses that are nothing like yours. And that's okay. In fact, it's absolutely fabulous that everybody sees artwork in such a different way. Otherwise, you know, wouldn't we be living in a robot world? <laughs> You know, we'd all be, if we were all the same and we all like the same things, it's a good thing that everybody loves different kinds of art, different kinds of quilt. And it's one of the things I love about the quilt world and the art world is there's room for all of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what's been really interesting is a lot of times when I'm building my blocks, it's a certain orientation I'm making it. And then when I go take the pictures, it flips 90 degrees or upside down. And I'm like, oh, this is all new possibilities. And so it's been interesting. Sometimes I'll put up all four orientations up on online and say, which one do you like best? And people are seeing such different, you know, they're seeing stairs versus, you know, under sea or things like that. And so it's really fascinating. Again, that perception of how people are seeing it, where they are in their particular uh, day or life and, and what's going on in the world around them. So, yeah, it's been a really fascinating um, journey so far. That's so cool. Um, besides this fabulous, wonderful, extraordinary 100 day project that I adore and love, what are you looking forward to coming up? Oh, coming up. Um, I'm super excited. Later this month, I'm doing some training for guilds. I'm part of the Northern California Quilt Council. And so, you know, all guilds all over the country are certainly, you know, they're all in too big of group sizes to be able to safely meet. And so, especially given the populations that generally are part of our guilds, it's, it's an additional risk. And so, trying to get, you know, help guilds kind of pivot to virtual programming. And so, provide them with resources, show them all that you can do with Zoom. Um, especially, you know, once you experience it, I think you see the possibilities, but if you just hear technology, I think people kind of are in their panic zone. And so I've got that going on later this month for Northern California guilds and teachers and whoever else wants to participate that are members to hopefully kind of, again, I've gotten so much out of that networking and that community virtually. And I'm hoping that other guilds will embrace and, and I'm excited to see, I think we had 60 or 70 registrations already for it. So I'm really okay. excited to see, yeah. So that's fun. Hopefully just revitalize the Colton community here in Northern California. And then what else? Do I Can got? I just, I want to say one thing to all of our lovely, lovely quilter ladies who are terrified of the um, technology. It's much easier than you think. And it will work. Can... It will work. We're going to be able to do this, to teach virtually online. And there are some advantages. Oh, There's I'm, really I've done a few advantage. virtual lectures. It is so nice not to have to schlep my quilts and set up <laughs> shop. And as for the attendees, you know, I have a lot of smaller quilts. They have a lot of detail. And so if you're in the third, fourth, fifth row, you're not going to see those details. But if you're on Zoom, everybody's got a front row seat. So it's really, I'm excited. 
I'm seeing a whole new possibilities. You know, with my guild, we've been doing virtual coffee breaks. Right. And we're trying to think, okay, what can't we do in a regular meeting? We can see people's studios. So we're having some of our members doing studio tours, which is fascinating. We get to see their pets, which you can't normally bring to a, a guild meeting unless it's <laughs> a, a, a therapy or, or a assistant pet. Um, what else? You know, we have members doing demos and, and showing things that they can do, talking about masks and how they're making them different tools. And so it's been really kind of fun to use this technology. And, and I'm seeing more and more members are getting on board. Like, that was it. That wasn't so scary. And so, yeah, if you right. can click this button and get on, we do the rest. We'll orient them. We'll provide them for success. And people get to see it. They get to see other people do show and tell. So, yeah, if I can figure out the, the, the setup process, anybody can figure out Zoom. It really is a, a very a user-friendly, very intuitive um, uh, software. So, right. yeah. Yeah. And I love that everybody has a front row seat. Everybody <laughs> has a front row And you know what? You don't have to wear a bra if you don't want to. <laughs> you <laughs> I want to wear that up here. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Just throw on a scarf. We don't care what the rest of it is. You can have your, you can be on your couch. You can be all comfy. You know, it's all good. Yeah, no, it's been fascinating. And so I, that at first I was like, I love doing in person. And how do I, how do I adapt as an instructor? Because I love that one-on-one -on -one interaction, but I'm seeing you can still do that virtually. You can still have those mm -hmm. connections. You can still, you know, that eye contact, that face face contact is so huge and you can get that. And so it's really been empowering and uplifting for me. And so I'm kind of thinking ahead, okay, how do I start adapting my workshops and everything else to continue to stay connected? So I'm excited. Right. So yeah. It's gonna be good. And you know, when this is, when we have a vaccine, when this is all over um, until the next thing comes, um, we, I think part of this is gonna stick around you know we'll we'll learn this technology and we'll keep all the good and the best parts of it and then we'll also just hug each other like crazy <laughs> absolutely no but i mean now we have you know like a lot of guilds have limited budgets they can only four teachers maybe within driving distance well now take that off the plate we don't have to house them we don't have to right. make them comfortable we can book teachers beyond california maybe even internationally and so there are some really exciting opportunities that this has to afford us. And so it's just a matter of getting more and more people comfortable and seeing and, and embracing those possibilities. So, yeah. Excellent. I hadn't even thought about the international options. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. We can say we're international. I had a, um, I taught for a virtual quilt show two weeks ago and I had a student from Spain. I'm like, I'm now an international instructor. And so it's really <laughs> fun to see um, quilters from all over the world and hearing where we're all going through, but seeing that common. I say sisterhood, I know there's men, but that common community, it really is, is very empowering. It is, it is. Um, it's just fabulous all around. I'm so grateful that we have the technology to let us connect with each other during the time where we have to physically be apart from each other. It's good, it's good. So is there any advice, anything you wanna to say to our fabulous quilters before we go? Uh, I think for me, when I first started, I kind of tried to, again, set rules for myself. And so my goals each day when I wake up is do something physical, fitness, whether it's go for a walk, do yoga, something to kind of keep my body engaged, do something creative, some kind of creative studio play, pet fabric, do whatever it is that's helpful. And then on the more responsible side, I would say, I try to do something that's for my business. So maybe it's updating my website, maybe it's kind of adjusting for workshops. And then I do something house related. Maybe it's giving my dog a bath or it's doing the dishes, something simple that it's not just letting those things go. But if I can check those four boxes off each day, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. It feels like I have structure. I have purpose in my day. I'm not just wallowing on a couch, soaking up Netflix, binge watching. And that's helped me a little bit, but really take care of yourself. Reach out to, um, and the other thing is staying connected. I was, you know, trying to reach out, making phone calls, Zooming, whatever it is that you can connect with family, friends. Um, we're all in this, you know, really staying united and, and just checking in. Um, I'm sure as much as I love to hear from people, it's nice to be on the receiving end. That, hey, I'm checking on you today. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. I agree 1000% <laughs> with everything, everything you said. Not so good at keeping the structure myself, but. 
That's <laughs> even in the best of times. <laughs> That's true for me. Um, thank you so much, Mel. It has been a pleasure and a delight to thank spend you. some time with you. And with you. Thank you very much. This has been fun. All right. You take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.